Hello, gamers, and happy Wednesday. Sorry about the lack of videos. We've been we've been getting through the sick. All right, so we're starting to go on the back end of it. I have a couple builds, a couple things I want to talk about this week. But today, I figured something I could start doing is I could start doing Wacky Wednesday again. So today, what I have for you is an off-meta DPS lifestaff build that's going to excel in Corruption and the Future Lost Dungeon. So you could be using this in Tempest. You could be using it in some other places, but that's where you're really going to see the most output. So I'm going to just show you the build. It's more support heavy, has a lot more buff potential, but then it does pump some decent damage against Corrupted, especially, and I wasn't even getting a full test with full Rendon, Empower Stacks, everything that we would need, and you can do a ton of damage just with what I'm going to give you today. So what is the build? will be really simple. We're gonna go full left side. We're not gonna take any ultimates. We're basically just gonna take all the buffs possible. We will take sacred. You could either take sacred, you could take LE, whatever you choose to do, totally up to you. But I just put one point in, in case I wanna use it just to stand in it. And then you could too, if you wanna burn an extra point instead of going somewhere over here with something, like you know maybe you don't need this 20% longer buff, we could go extra stamina and regen um, for mana. And so I go full orb, I'll go full, and you don't even have to put these three points in, but it's like, why not? Um, I'll go Spirits United, I'll take one point into Beacon, because that's all I really need, and then I at least make sure I have my Fortify. You don't have to take Ben Light if you don't want to, but I just take it anyway, and then you can choose kind of between Glowing Focus. This is the build, it's pretty blade, Blatantly simple, uh, there's, there's not much to it. You're not really gonna use SG too much. It's kind of like in your back pocket in case you want some extra healing. But what you're really going to do is rotate between heavy attack into orb, into light attack, into beacon, right? Or heavy attack into beacon, light attack into orb. So you're gonna hit these four shots that do about, you know, depending on if you have rend or not, uh, like 3K a hit. And you really do some crazy damage. And you have this weird burst window that is kind of oddly effective just because of how low the cooldown is on orb mixed with refreshing move on a life staff mixed with refreshing and all this cooldown reduction and revitalize and everything like that, that you get a lot of orbs off, meaning we can heavy attack into orb and then or light attack into orb. All right, so with the Void Gauntlet, this is gonna be your side piece. This is gonna be your main form of AoE. It's going to be your self buffing and your debuffing and some more support stuff. So what are we gonna do here? We're gonna take Orb all the way down. What are you gonna do? Once you hit an enemy, you're going to then pop the Orb. You'll get a double hit, a double rend, and a double dot that'll continuously tick. Now, the good point of this is that we can use this to proc all of our AoE through Glimpse of the Void. What we'll do is we'll throw out the orb, it'll hit, it'll pop, and as long as we get at least four stacks, we can then heavy attack, reset orb, and do the same kind of AoE rotation. Excuse Winston back there. And so it's just rinse and repeat with your AoE there. It's also another way to get triple rend going. The rend doesn't last that long, but it's still a rend nonetheless. Now, the only way we can really get Glimpse of the Void is if we start to run Essence Rupture. And this is pretty solid because you can throw this on for your healer, then they don't have to worry about it, and everybody will start getting healed, including yourself. You have to go into here, here, and then you're gonna have to go here. Sorry, I was thinking. And then we go Glimpse of the Void. That way you have this to reset for AOE purposes. And then over here, we're gonna take Oblivion all the way down, take as much damage and cooldown reduction stuff as you can, just cause you're gonna be a pumper. Or we're gonna go something like that. You don't necessarily need that, just cause we aren't really using our Void Gauntlet all that much. But this is the secondary. You're gonna pump, it's interesting. It's definitely different to play. But I just wanted to show that, you know, just because you're a PVE mage doesn't mean you have to play Fire Staff, doesn't mean you have to have an Ice Gauntlet. There is a ton of room to actually play this build, and I think, and I think there's way more ways to optimize it. This is one I did on my very first Wacky Wednesday. I've had a very, um, you know, all around coming to home moments this week, just thinking, what, what can I do? What can I start doing to really continue with my new world content creation? And I wanna get back to Wacky Wednesday. I thought maybe making some tweaks to this build would be a great way to go into it. And again, more builds and stuff the rest of the week let's talk about attributes build all that stuff and how to do the rotation all right so here i am with my attributes what would i suggest doing well i did a lot of testing and by a lot i mean a lot with different gems i've tried diamonds i've tried everything and again i was focused on corrupted so i was using an uh, an arcane gem depends on what you're doing if you're fighting lost i would probably go like a like an opal or something like that or even a diamond if you think you could just keep yourself topped off but i think just with the diamond as a dps there's so many opportunities for you to take damage where you don't get full diamond effectiveness and it might just be better to do something else. So like an opal would be great if you also want to do a build like this, but you're not focused on corrupted. This is the life staff I'm using. I also have corrupted bane, right? So I have even more damage, but we're going 50 int. It does more on the split, gives you increased nature damage as well on your light and heavy attacks for your life staff. And then we're going to go 300 focus. 
We're going to at least do 100 con because you're not going to live unless you have some health in PvE. Now, you could go less if you want to be just pure glass cannon. And I found you get the most damage going straight focus 50 in. You burst pretty hard. It gives you some opportunity. I've tried testing 100 in. I've tried testing 150 in. 150 in is actually less damage than 50. Um, it, it just doesn't It doesn't make sense. Now, it's all pretty close. But as far as this goes, and then well, if, if you wanted to do just a full nature damage build, you would just end up going full focus, sw swap on the opal, and then like this would be really good for fighting loss if you went nature damage. But this build that we have going is strictly for corrupted. We have that corrupted Bane Lifestaff, corrupted enchanting. Um, it would be great if we had like Keen on there instead of Refreshing Move. You don't really need Refreshing Move as much, but it is great just to keep getting your beacons up to have that big Wombo powerhouse combo. So that's what I would do as far as stats go. Then gearing, I literally just wear my healer gear. That's all. It's just my healer gear. I have refreshing on everything. It's not like anything I have to go super in-depth into. You can run your healer gear with perks, all that good stuff in here. Good. Um, same thing with my neck. I'm running a Misty Kismet too. But the ring. Ring? I was debating on a couple things, right? There's a lot of different things you could do. Ultimately, I decided taking a nature damage ring is going to be our best bet. So I actually found a nature damage sacred ring for like a thousand gold. I just picked it up, bought it, and here we are. Uh, I can pump. I'm good to go. And it's actually a lot of fun to play. And I'll show you the gameplay after this. And then as far as life stuff goes, I got this for a thousand gold. Corrupted Bane, refreshing move, enchanted, right? Uh, ideally, I think if you were doing just a mainly, you know, PvE focused weapon, you need the Bane. So either Lost Bane or Corrupted Bane. Nature damage is good to both. And then, okay, we have that arcane gem, so that's even better. But if you're going to go lost, you could do some crazy stuff. And then enchanted is just going to be your better option because so much of our damage comes from light and heavy attacking and then refreshing move. And boom. And then just eat your focus food or whatever you want to get the stat distribution and you'll be hunky dory. And uh, make sure you use a honing stone. You've got, you know, your DPS gamer, use your coatings. And I'm telling you, when you have a rended target, you will actually be amazed at how much damage you do. I think for Tempest and for uh, the future Lost Dungeon that this case has a lot of potential. It has a lot of potential and might actually be used. And I might try it out on stream. All right, so I just figured, why not uh, show you some gameplay here? Me just running through, killing things, how I, how I play it. So what is the rotation? Um, first thing you're going to want to do is throw out orb and you're going to pop it, get that double rend, throw oblivion down, charge up a heavy attack on the life staff, then into orb, light attack into beacon is the easiest way to do that combo, the most fluid, and you do pump a lot of damage. Again, throw on your corrupted, uh, tinctures, coatings, whatever, whatever they're called, throw on your honing stones, everything that you need to succeed and really be a DPS. And you will see you do a significant amount of damage and you'll see you get Fast cooldowns, you can really keep pumping out those beacon and orb cool uh, cooldowns with the rotation, especially orb, and they hit hard. And that was, again, you'll see I kind of transitioned there. I didn't even have my nature damage ring on there, and I was still pumping. So I take on things, I start killing them even faster here, and it it's a it's a blast. I can solo bosses, I'll, I'll take on this elite, and I'm just going to cut forward so that you can see me killing him. I promise I didn't die, but you do have that healing potential. Like I take on multiple mobs here. I'm sitting at 9K health. I have fortifies going on, but here's what you have. You can throw down sacred ground. Is it cheating to heal in PVE? I don't think so. We pump enough that we're chilling. I can just keep taking hits because again, I'm double fortified all the time, even with this lower health build. So you can go even less health if you'd like to. And I can sit here and take out all the ads and then I'll focus down the boss. And I honestly haven't really ever been able to kill this guy with any of my other kind of meme wacky Wednesday builds. And I think it's a good spot to test with all this stuff going on. Like, yes, I am healing, but I think it also just shows that I have the capability to do damage. I mean, you're seeing here, I'm hitting him for, and I get smacked here. I do, I think I do have to pop a, a potter. I think I told myself no potting, but I'm hitting this guy with a light attack for 2.2, right? and I'm charging up and he's not even rended. So imagine you're fighting a target where you have full rend, you're able to throw down your oblivion without having to worry, and you can just keep smacking them. I think you have a lot of down, there's the potion, and I think you have a lot of damage potential if you have a group and you're not just sitting here soloing, but you do have that potential to be a solo mage, right? And again, I think there are so many ways that you can start to optimize it, throw in uh, tweaks to the build, but it's a fun one to play. I'm just a huge fan of the off meta game. I think there's there's room for it. I think if you can really get it optimized in your group, it's what, you know, let, lets the theory crafters shine. It's what gives the game some more breath and doing dumb stuff like this just makes it more fun. So think about some ways you could make this better. Think about some ways that if you were actually in a group comp and you're not rolling around with 800 different elites on you, that you could maybe, you know, pump some more DPS. And again, this is like, 
600 gear, it's not even optimized, and I'm still able to do things. I also, just to, for the testing purposes, because I know people love when I don't you know, kill level 65 elites, I went over to Merc to kill some too. Is it harder? Yeah, the elites are more difficult, they have more defense, but you can still take them out. I mean, even just looking here, I have the Oblivion into Double Rend, into Heavy, and then the two abilities, and like, it does significant damage. I think if you have somebody just maintaining that Rend for you, you're able to just really focus on doing everything. You had honing stones on, you have your um, coding on. I, I, I honestly think it could be really nuts, but I think this build is really meant for Corrupted Mage, but it's also going to be for Lost. I think where it'll really shine is Lost because of that nature damage focus and just being able to throw in an Opal full focus pump and nature scale with a nature damage ring would be insane. So maybe some more testing in the future. I hope people enjoy this. I, I'm assuming people missed some of this stuff, this old classic like Wacky Wednesday kind of thing. So here we are, we're bringing it back. Next week I'll have another one, I promise. And we'll have some more stuff throughout the week. But as always, I, again, I'm sorry it's been light on the content. I appreciate all the support that every single one of you give me every day that I am alive and I wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for all of you. So I'll be streaming very, very shortly here after this video comes out. Come ask me some questions. Come hang out with me. But as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you to every single one of you for being you. Peace.